Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the Chemit webinar on our capacitors for suppressing EMI. My name is Alexander Nebel and I will moderate the webinar today. We are very pleased that you find the time to join our webinar. Presenter today is Rahul Sharma, our product manager for film capacitors. Hello Rahul, thank you for presenting today. Please tell the audience shortly about your role inside Chemit and then you can directly start your presentation. Thank you so much, Alexander, for organizing the webinar and for your kind introduction. Hello, everyone. And once again, I would like to welcome you all for today's webinar. The topic that we are going to cover today concerns our film technology products for EMI suppression applications. So before we dive into today's agenda, let me briefly give you a short overview of myself. My name is Rahul Sharma, and I'm the product manager based in Munich, responsible for film capacitors in the Central European region. Academically, I'm an electrical and electronics engineer with a master's degree with a specialization in power electronics. And professionally, I have acquired decent hardware development experience prior to my product management role. On the personal front, I am happily married and the father of a beautiful baby girl. I like to spend a lot of my free time doing outdoor activities like running, biking, etc. Moving forward, let's see what we have got in today's agenda. I would like to begin with introducing the audience with some of the key definitions and typical classification and characteristics specific to EMI suppression capacitors, followed by our focus safety capacitor film products. We will also do a short comparison of our products with the existing competition to see where we stand with respect to the latest technology. Towards the end, I will also show you some of the main applications and web based tool to assist the design engineers in selecting the right capacitor. For their design. So here I would like to briefly explain the latest demanding requirements for the selection of suppression or safety capacitors, especially in the automotive and harsh environmental conditions. THP test or thermal humidity or temperature humidity bias test. This test is basically used to ascertain the reliability of a safety capacitor by accelerating the degradation process of a capacitor and measuring the electrical parameters after a certain period of time, if they're still within specific limits or not. IEC 60384-14 is the standard who uh, defines the ma major uh, parameters for EMI safety caps. And in the latest amendment, they have defined three different biased humidity grades. So 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, starting from mild to harsh, to make sure that the capacitors can meet the demanding harsh environmental requirements and can continue to function during the whole product lifetime without having any issues. Here I am limiting it to only two grades in connection with the focus products, which would be shown later. So grade 2B, here the acceleration test is basically carried out at 85 degrees centigrade and 85% relative humidity for 500 hours at rated AC or DC voltage. For grade 3B, the same test is carried out for 5,000 uh, for 1,000 hours at rated AC or DC voltage. What does this imply? That these tests basically ensure that the capacitance and dissipation factor are highly stable during their expected lifetime. Additionally, for automotive industry, high pot test is also very critically very, is also very critical, especially for bi capacitors. It is a non-destructive test that determines the capability of electrical insulation during likely over voltage transients in the life of the capacitor. So where exactly we use safety capacitors and what are the different types of safety capacitors? So EMI, safety capa EMI or safety capacitors are basically mounted in the input power stage to filter the noise emitted by the device to the grid or power line. X-class capacitors are connected between phase to phase or phase to neutral, whereas Y-class capacitors are normally connected between phase to ground. Class X capacitors can also be further divided into sub two subclasses, X1 and X2, according to the peak voltage of the impulse superimposed on the mains voltage to which they may be subjected in service. Such impulses may arise either from lightning strikes or outside lines or from switching in neighboring equipment or switching in the equipment in which the capacitor is used. X2 capacitors can withstand peak impulse voltages up to 2.5 kilo volt and X1 can withstand 
up to 4 kV. Similarly, class Y capacitors are divided into two subclasses, Y1 or Y2, where Y2 capacitor can withstand maximum peak impulse voltages of up to 5 kV and Y1 can withstand up to 8 kV. Also, X1 capacitors, owing to their high, higher peak impulse voltage capability, can be substituted by Y2 or Y1 capacitors of the same or higher rated voltage, uh, whereas X2 capacitors can be substituted with X1 or Y2 or Y1 capacitors of the same or higher rated voltage. Another important characteristic of film safety capacitors is their self-healing capability. What is self-healing? The self-healing property of metallized film dielectrics is basically their ability to, re to self-regenerate an internal drop of insulation resistance. This ensures a safe failure mode in AC filtering applications where electrical noise and peak voltages are added repeatedly or occasionally to the fundamental frequency. So when the self-healing operates, the temporary breakdown which, which it creates results in a clearing of a metallized dielectric small area causing a minor loss of capacitance and the restoration of the capacitor's initial electrical properties. In the metallized film capacitor, the metal layer is very thin and in case of dielectric breakdown, the energy released by the arc discharges, that is by the arc discharge in the breakdown channel is sufficient to totally evaporate the thin uh, metal coating close to the channel. This results in insulation restoring and a small capacitance drop which can be anywhere between 1 to 2 percent. This property makes the film capacitors highly soft, sought after technology for safety applications. Here is a characteristic comparison table of different film dielectrics like polypropylene, PET, PPS and PEN highlighting the main advantages and disadvantages or characteristics of each of these dielectrics suitable for different applications. As today's webinar concerns mainly with the safety capacitors, we will not go any deeper into this table, but will just be highlighting that polypropylene, uh, that polypropylene is the best dielectric suitable for safety capacitors due to its internal structure and its excellent self-healing property. Okay. So far, after going through the basic technical overview and requirements regarding the EMI suppression capacitors, it's time to see the products from Kemet film portfolio. In our portfolio, we have different types of X-class and Y-class capacitors. Depending on the input voltage, temperature, and end application uses, as can be seen in the table. Sorry, there was some uh, uh, loss of connection on my side. So let's resume. In X1 class, we have mainly R49, R47, and PHE 845 series defined for different input AC voltages. For example, R49 is up to 330 volt AC. R47 series is suitable for applications with AC input voltage of 440 volts AC, and PHE 845 is suitable for input AC voltage is going up to 760 volt AC. Similarly, in X2 class, we have different series, uh, R46 with temperature capability up to 125 degrees centigrade, and also R46M, which is the miniaturized version of R46, suitable for commercial applications. Our F862V054 and F863 series are suitable for harsh environmental conditions and also for automotive applications. In Y2 class, we have R41 and R41T series, with R41T being uh, the higher temperature series with capability to withstand also higher DC voltages and THP grade 3B. The green highlighted series uh, in the slide would be the one which we would be de uh, discussing in more detail in the following slides. Okay, so let's get into more detail of our latest released and focus X2 and Y2 capacitor series suitable for automotive and harsh environmental applications. So before we jump into the uh, main classification or characteristics of these two series, here is the winding scheme of F862V054 and R41T. The basic difference in the construction style of these two series is that F862V054 or our X2 capacitor series 
consists of single section of metallized polypropylene film, whereas R41T comprises of two sections in series to allow it to withstand much higher peak impulse voltages. Let's go deeper into the X2 series F862V054. The F862V054 series is constructed of metallized polypropylene film encapsulated with self-extinguishing resin in a box. It's ideal for harsh environmental conditions as well as meets the demanding AEC Q200 qualification requirements. The series comes both in non-halogen free as well as halogen free box with F862V054 being the standard series with non-halogen free box. So if a customer needs uh, a series for halogen free, then we just simply need to remove the V054 what we see in this table here on, in the part numbering. The series uh, F862504 is for, uh, is for EMI suppression filtering in AC and DC applications and can also be used for applications in series with the mains. The series is not recommended for applications where there is a high ripple current. Some of the main characteristics of F862504 are uh, input voltage is 310 volt AC and DC uh, voltage is up to 630 volts. The capacitance range is between 0.1 microfarad going up to 4.7 microfarad in pitches 15 to 27.5 millimeter. The series is also THP grade 2B, which I already introduced you into the, in the beginning of the, our presentation, which means it is 8585 up to 500 hours at rated AC voltage, which is 310 volt AC in this case. The series can also withstand higher uh, uh, number of hours during the THP test, but at reduced voltage. So for example, here 8585, but at 240 volt AC up to 1000 hours. Let's see where we are in terms of technology and other important parameters with respect to the main competition. As in the table, the comparison is between Kemet Film X2 capacitor series f 862 v 54 against TDK uh, series B3292H and B3296H. And from GD, it's D42W series, and from Visha, it's F339 series. Uh, as we can see, uh, we are almost in line with the competition in terms of voltage range, pitches, as well as the capacitance range. All of the products are also AEC Q200 qualified. In terms of THP performance, our product is grade 2B, which is 8585 at rated voltage, 500 hours. Also similar to, uh, to um, Vishay, which is also grade 2B, 8585 relative humidity at 500 hours. And if you see the TDK part and GD part, uh, you can easily notice that, it, this, that the TDK part and GD part is not THB grade 2B because the rated voltage here is not uh, 300, 10 volts, but rather only 240 volts AC. Apart from this, uh, the DC voltage proof test that we do uh, in our facilities is also rated at higher DC voltage, 1900 volt DC, if we compare it with TDK or GD or even Vishe. Apart from uh, this main uh, classification, the Kemet series can also be used for applications where the capacitor needs to be connected in series with the main. Uh, it's also true for TDK and GD, whereas Vishes F339 series cannot be used in series with the main applications. Okay, so that was more or less about our X2 capacitor series F862V054. Now coming to our latest Y2 series R41T. This capacitor series is also used for electromagnetic interference suppression filtering in line to line uh, in line to ground and across the line applications, which requires Y2 or X1 safety classification. This product is suitable for use in situations where failure of the capacitor could lead to danger of electric shock. And, and this is also ideal for harsh environmental conditions and meets demanding AZQ200 qualification requirements. The capacitor is also meant for higher temperature applications up to 125 degrees centigrade and can be easily recognized from the part numbering by noticing the T0 character in the second last digit of the part numbering, which is also highlighted here. So this T0 represents that this capacitor is higher temperature capacitor. Because we also have another R41, series, R41 series, which is only up to 110 degrees centigrade. 
the series is also for EMI suppression filtering, as I already mentioned, for AC and DC applications, maximized for self-healing and peak voltage withstanding. And it is not recommended for applications where high ripple current are there or for series with the main applications. Some of the main application, uh, some of the main characteristics of R41T are its input voltage range, which is 310 vo uh, 300 volts AC and 1500 volts DC. The capacitance range is from 2.2 nanofarad and going up to one microfarad in pitches from 10 to 37.5 millimeter. Another characteristic of this series is its THB grade. So it is THB grade 3B, which means that it can withstand 85 degrees at 85% relative humidity up to 1000 hours at rated voltage. Also, the maximum temperature for this series is 125. Let's see again where we are in terms of technology and other important parameters with respect to the main competition. As in the table, the comparison is between Kemet Film Y2 capacitor series R41T against TDK B32032 and BB32036. From GD, we have taken C43 series and from Vishay, we have chosen F340 series for a comparative study. And here again, we, we are almost in line with the competition in terms of the AC voltage range, pitch and capacitance range. But what separates us from the rest is our, is our DC voltage rating, which is 1500 volt DC. And if you look at TDK and Vishay, the maximum DC voltage that they can support is only 1000 volts. Also, another uh, important highlight here for R41D series is that it is rated for up to 125 degrees centigrade. And this is the only high temperature series right now in the market, making it the most suitable candidate amongst the competition for applications where there is a high temperature requirement. Apart from this, all of the products are also AECQ200 qualified. In terms of THP performance, our product is grade 3B, which is also along with TDK and Vishay. They are also grade 3B cloud qualified. Uh, furthermore, the high pot test that we are doing at our facilities for our R41T series is at 4 kilovolts DC, whereas uh, for Vishay, it's 3.4 kilovolts DC, and TDK and GD has not specified it in their data sheet. So this also makes a big difference because a lot of automotive customers, they need higher high pot test to make, to make it safe for, for their applications. Coming to the application examples. So after going through the technical details of our X2 and Y2 capacitor, here are some of the main applications where our safety capacitors find their use. F862 series as X2 capacitor can be used for across the line applications in onboard battery charger or switch mode power supplies. And our X2 capacitor can also be used for applications where it needs to be placed in series with the mains, uh, for example, in energy meter applications. Because for energy meter applications, capacitance stability is very important. And, this, and, and the performance of our f 862 v makes it a suitable candidate for applications where the capacitance drop is very, very low and within the limits uh, desired, by our for, desired for energy meter applications. Apart from that, R41D series as Y2 capacitor can be used for applications such as onboard battery charger, solar inverter, 5G power supplies, etc. Okay, so we are almost through with the, the main products uh, of, from our X and Y capacitor series. Apart from this, we also uh, uh, needed, I, I also wanted to highlight uh, that how difficult it is to calculate the lifetime of RFI film capacitors. And as we all know, it's not so easy to estimate or calculate the lifetime under THP conditions using just the information which is available from the data sheet. This is why we have also released a new web-based tool which would empower the designers to easily estimate and design the Kamet film capacitors for their applications. So our web-based tool, also called as KLM, uh, short for Kemet Life Expectancy Model, is a powerful design tool able to predict the service life of Kemet metallized film capacitors, which are designed to withstand harsh environmental conditions. It is also first of its kind tool, which is able to take into consideration three key factors, 
which is temperature, relative humidity, and bias to, bias to voltage for lifetime estimation. It is, a, it is based on a model which is internally developed at Kemet Corporation. So there was a theoretical calculation and there were a lot of tests carried out at different voltages and different temperatures and different relative humidity. And all those, uh, all those experiments and the test result was uh, compared with this theoretical model to come, come up with a, with a ratio or with a number which can be linked with the estimation model. The tool is available at our Inchemet Engineering Center website. And uh, right now we have uh, mainly three, three series inside this tool, which are F862054, F863 and R41T. But soon we will also add other series from our XY portfolio to this tool. Here, uh, just uh, some more information about the tool. So as a designer, I, I mean, the idea was to make the tool as uh, easier as possible for the designer. So here the designer just need to enter the values for their individual environmental and operating conditions like voltage, relative humidity and temperature, etc. depending on their app, depending on the mission profile or the end application uses. And then the tool will accordingly calculate the life expectancy based on these parameters. There will also be a possibility to load the complete mission profile of the application to estimate the lifetime of the use or selected capacitor. Here, the criteria that we have chosen is the capacitance drop of 20%. But soon we will also update the tool with uh, the designer having uh, the possibility to also select this criteria. So maybe if if he wants to, or the designer wants to see uh, the, the lifetime based on 10% uh, degradation or 20% or 30%, then, the, then he will also have the facility to, to be able to manipulate with his mission profile and the lifetime calculation. Here is an example of one of the selected F862 capacitor with multiple profiles. As you can see uh, here the, for, for the first line, the temperature is 30, humidity 40% and 300 and weighted voltage. The life expectancy goes up to 150,000 hours. Whereas uh, if we, see at 50 degrees centigrade and 50% relative humidity, the lifetime drops to 63,000. If we increase the temperature to 80 degrees centigrade and decrease the relative humidity and also decrease the voltage, then we can see there is still some difference in the life expectancy calculated by our model. If we increase the temperature to 100 degrees centigrade, really high, and uh, uh, relative humidity to 60%, then the number of hours are shown on the right side. So the, so the designer has multiple possibilities to play around with the mission profile. And depending on the end application that he's designing the capacitor for, he can really estimate the life expectancy and accordingly he may choose the right capacitor for his application. Okay. So as we move towards the end of this webinar session of film EMI suppression capacitors, here are the main key points and take away of, of our latest in focus X2 and Y2 capacitor series. So F862V054 is our latest X2 capacitor series, which is highly reliable, THP grade 2B and cost efficient, meant for across the line and for in series with the main ap applications. R41T is our Y2 capacitor series, which can also be used as X2 capacitor, uh, which is also very reliable and THP grade 3B, so 85, 85,000 hours at rated voltage with higher temperature capability up to 125 degrees centigrade and higher DC voltage rating going up to 1500 volt DC, making it a suitable candidate for R41 uh, for Y2 applications. And this is also the, the latest product and uh, furthermore, the only product with higher temperature capability. So, Thank you so much uh, for, for listening to my webinar. Thank you for your attendance today and I hope to see you soon again.